Okay, you're streaming. Okay, thank you, Lisa. Good, good evening, everyone, and welcome to the March 10th, 2021 meeting of the Niski Unit Task Force on Racial Equity and Justice. It's good to see everyone. Um, I'm going to note and welcome everyone that's present. I'll note that we have present John Lemeling, um, David Amadeo, Dr. Haywood Horton, Ms. Pretty uh, Irani, Elizabeth Paul, Dr. Jamie Puccioni, uh, Arinka Abad, and um, Keitaki Boda Bodhankar. Uh, good evening, everyone, and welcome. We have uh, nine members of the task force present. I'll note that we have one excused absence, and that is uh, Jillian Margolis. Um, and we have uh, six, five additional members that I have not heard from. Uh, so those absences shall be noted as unexcused. Um, since we have less than a quorum, I will at this time call the meeting to order and acknowledge that we will not be voting at this time on the approval of the February 10th, 2021 meeting minutes, but we will proceed with the rest of the meeting this evening. Um, so at this time, I welcome everyone. Before we get started, does anyone have any issues or comments that they'd like us to discuss before I get into the rest of the agenda? Okay, I'm seeing no's. Um, we are going to table the first item on the agenda, which is approval of the two, February 10th, 2021 meeting minutes. And I will turn the tables over to Priti Irani for the second item on the agenda, which is the Open Task Force Plan Self-Evaluation. And Priti, um, we will leave the floor open to you for the next 30 minutes, so you may proceed. Okay, <clears throat> it won't take so long. What I was looking for is down the road, how do we know we are doing a good job as, as a task force? Anything that we produce, you know, for the town or, or for our community, how do we know that we're doing a good job, really? Are there some processes or criteria out there that I could look, that I could find? So what I found was this was used at the federal level, developed by a consultant for any plan or any report that a public body puts out. This was the criteria. Basically, it has to do with engaging community. You find it's open meeting and meaningful engagement and looking to see how you could engage community more. So what the reason I brought that up to notice is to look at it and see if we can adapt it to our use. So say, for example, the public safety, our public safety work group has worked with the collaborative to put out a report. Could we, when the report is finally put out, can we take a look at this and say, it, it's really it's really a guiding tool to say, did we do a good job? How could we do better? Was it perfect? And if it was not perfect, what could we work on? So that's all. That's really what it was, to look at it and see if we can adapt it uh, for for our work. Or if not, if there's an another tool that you can consider, it's always good to look at how you're going to evaluate yourself before as you're starting out rather than at the end when you don't know what is what you were doing. So th that's really what it was, that's all. Yeah? So do you wish to present 
your method for doing this evaluation? I would I can I can review it briefly, but it's really for everybody first to read. So this particular one, they identified a framework for equitable approach to decision making. And so it was about if you look at it has categories uh, formulating a plan, transparency, strategic action plan. And you kind of who who fills us out? The way I've done these when when I were at work is every mem member of a work group or a task force or a community fills it fills it out and then sees whether we have consensus because not you know something I may say, oh, it was great. The collaboration was great and I give it a high rating. But then somebody else says, no, that no, 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 I don't agree with you. So basically, you get a sense from the task force. Are we on the same page for this? It's it's basically a tool for dialogue. So what I've put over here is formulating the in like in the category. This was taken almost directly from the federal one. I made a few changes based on what I thought could be adapted. But so uh, if you look at the first one, was disciplinary um, collaboration uh, involved in formulating the plan? And one, two, three is really the charge, you know, in terms of, uh, and I'm trying to remember where I took it from. Did I say? Pretty, would you like to present your screen? Oh, I could do that. Yeah, I am. Um, right, I will. But I'm just trying to think of, um, okay. I have these references out there, and I think when I uploaded it to the drive, it didn't carry over. But uh, I can present my screen. Let me see. Oh. Let's see, share my screen, present now. A tab. Or, sorry. Let's see, present now. Your entire screen. Do you see the Niska Unit Task Force? Do you see that? Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yeah, we can see it. Is there any way you can enlarge it? I can. Yeah. Let's My see. eyes aren't as good as they used to be, even with glasses. Is that better? That's a little better. A little bit. Ah, perfect. Perfect. Yeah, that's I great. That's the largest. Thank you, pretty. Typical. Yeah. Thank you. <clears throat> My eyes. Thank you. So, okay. So, the charge of the task force on a racial equity and is to develop a shared understanding of equity, one, you know, just remember the notification, identify a framework for equitable approach to decision-making. This is taken from the town charge and through deliberate dialogue, including assessment of current practices, develop a plan for meeting equity targets, recommend resource allocation and opportunities for ongoing dialogue. So this particular consultant developed, which is used by the agencies at the federal level, developed 30 criteria that the that different groups had to kind of fill out and figure out. So what I did was I looked at the criteria, for example, was multidisciplinary, if you look at the first one, collaboration involved in formulating the plan. So if you look at that, it's kind of related to shared understanding of equity, multiple folks are involved. Uh, it, it relates to a framework for equitable approach to decision making, and there's dialogue when you have different people. So basically, I looked at whatever criteria was developed and tried to see, did it correlate with the charge that we were given? So it, it will take you... So basically, when you look at it, look at the criteria and see if you agree that it does or does not link with the charge given to us. So. The suggestion is to kind of evaluate our work is, was it uh, a formulating the plan in the open? So to give an a tangible example, let's look at the public safety group, right? So did they in involve a broad collaboration? So these are the various parts they could look at. 
uh, was it um, transparent? For example, the first one there says, does the plan contain a strategic action that's that inventories agency high value information some of it currently available for download so you know it's posted on the website you and so you it's a discussion what does that mean everybody may interpret it differently but really it's a it's a it's a group for it's a tool for discussion so let me go down a little bit and give you another one uh, is there a plan to demarcate educational material as free for reuse. I put not available because I didn't know if that really applies to us. Um, then number 11, does the plan detail compliance with transparency initiative guidance and where gaps exist, detail steps the agency or the task force is taking and timing to meet the requirements for each initiative. So this could be done by the work groups or, or the task force. So this is, Something I'm proposing, I'm not saying we have to do it, but saying this may be a good thing for us to look at and see if this applies to us and something we can use to evaluate our work, you know, as we are working and at the end of it, did we meet this? Do we have a website link? Um, what else? And in terms of participation, uh, does the plan explain how the agency or we can put the task force will improve part participation uh, at public, uh, me uh, will, uh, including steps the task force will take to revise its current practices to increase opportunities for public transportation and feedback on core mission activities. Uh, in terms of collaboration, you have, uh, does the plan uh, have steps the task force will take to revise or the work group will take to revise its current practices to further collaboration. And so these are the criteria the consultant developed for this group. And I was my suggestion was take a look at it and see if that's something that we would like to use and adapt for our task force. And what I did was I looked through it and I said, many of these are things we are required to do in, in terms of our charge. The wording may not be absolutely the way we want it, but the criteria are there. So it, it, it's a suggestion. Pretty. Uh, this is wonderful. Uh, I, I, I really like your work. However, I was going to suggest, I don't know, um, I know a little bit about uh, program evaluation. That's one of my expertise. And uh, maybe, um, breaking it down to the subgroups or the groups that we have within our task force will work better having like an umbrella an umbrella of general questions and then going into the into depth like probably one or two or three questions within each group to kind of provide a little bit of feedback and then maybe throw in there one or two um uh, qualitative um questions where you have comments at the end. Um, I think that in this case, the like hard scale works really well. However, I was thinking more like more likely, less likely kind of thing, and then not applicable kind of yeah. like in the middle. So Sorry, the numbers that are not the like hard scale, right? Yeah. Yeah, no. These are oh, yeah. the the issues the over red. here, what they put is red that it does not satisfy, yellow right. partially mm -hmm. satisfies, green right. fully satisfies, and any not applicable. So there are four. So it's not even a scale. It's it's mm -hmm. it's, it's a Likert scale, but a very simple Likert. one. Yeah, right. so that's what they used. But you, yeah. you're right, and all they have 30 criteria. We could decrease the criteria, but it's a starting point. Yeah, this is wonderful, yeah. Yeah. That's all. Uh, and like I said, uh, the structure could be more like a general, like that in like going into like a general as of the task force and then, you know, formulating the questions pertaining of each group uh, and more particular to what was basically assessed on each group, right? Because each group has different purposes, although there is one common purpose, which is the equity, but it's still, you know, just compliant with the our bylaws, right? Right. So if you look at this, the intent is really not so much the content as much as the openness 
the engagement, no matter mm -hmm. what the topic is. Mm -hmm. And they had 30 criteria. It, I, I think 30 criteria may be too much for this group because yeah. there's a small group. <laughs> but if, you, if you're open to it, maybe I can work with some members to pair it down. I am open. And okay, Ari and somebody else, and maybe we can suggest, but the same questions used by anybody for the task force, for the work group, because it's really about bringing people in, right? Yeah. So it's, yeah. So Ari, anybody else would like to work on that? Yeah. All right. That's a this start. This is great. Great. This is great. Yeah, work. it shouldn't take long. No. Okay. That's maybe all. The, the comments will take yeah. long. But. Right. <laughs> Thank you, Ari, and thank no you, problem. Liz. Can I just make a yes, comment, if, please? Yes. Yeah, I think I think this is a, a great instrument. It's very comprehensive. Um, I I would love to see it scaled down a little bit and maybe see how many of the thirty criteria are um, duplicated in some way, shape, or form to, to see if it can be pared down. And I, I might also suggest um, making the language a little more user friendly and less governmental. Mm -hmm. I think um, some of the vocabulary is a little complex. Um, right. So maybe maybe just take a look at that and, and maybe simplify it a little bit. But um, I love the format. I'm very familiar with the, the red, yellow, green, as, as so many of us are in terms of um, assessing um, satisfaction of, of the goal or mission. Mm -hmm. I also want to know what's what would follow this. I mean, if, if you're looking at it and we're giving, um, we're, we're rating ourselves and stakeholders are rating um, the work of the group or the task force or committee, whatever, whatever the situation may be. What happens next? It's up to us. So a, a self-assessment is basically looking to improve ourselves. So the first time you do it. We could actually do a test case because you have the public safety group, which has already put out a report, right? Mm -hmm. So we can include John or uh, Jillian. I think you all were, or Larry's not on. And, and see if we can use that as an example to test this instrument, the simplified instrument. And, and the issue is if something is missing or if something is weak in a particular group, then the work group comes up with suggestion on how to strengthen that part. Like, for example, I was looking at um, listening to the Schenectady uh, Public Safety, you know, their city council plan. And the biggest issue there was people talked about is the lack of inclusion, you know. Mm -hmm. And so, OK, so if lack of inclusion is considered a weak point, how are we going to work on it? moving forward you can't change what happened in the past so it's a way to strengthen parts of our group of our work that is weak and also if across a work group we have five members of the work group and they disagree on the way on how to rate something that tells you that's that there needs to be some communication or shared understanding within the work group so it helps build an understanding within the work group and strengthen your work as you move along so it's not like a report card it's more a tool for conversation, dialogue, and improvement. Great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thanks. That's it, Dale. Yeah, it's like more like a statement of, I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm always talking over. It's more like a statement of suggestions to, in, to kind of like make more um, accommodations to try to improve how we work together in order to achieve more. Yeah, it's an, it's an accountability instrument, certainly, too, as well. Not just about achieving, but a, a holding ourselves accountable to the work. Mm -hmm. Thank you very much, Pretty. That was very helpful. And um, we have a new tool. I, I'll be curious to see what you and Ari and Liz come up with um, and how we can utilize it. So thank you very much. Uh, it's been brought to my attention that we now have a quorum. Welcome, Sandra. You, you've given us the power to vote tonight. And so um, I'm going to proceed, uh, going back and proceed as I should have from the beginning. I will take a quick roll call. And um, since we now have at least 10 members, I've already called out the names. 
So I'll just ask that you just say here or just do a quick response when I call out your name. Um, and then we will move towards the approval of the minutes. Um, I'm here, Dale Black Pennington. David Amadeo? Here. Arinka Abad? Here. Priti Irani? Here. Dr. Haywood Horton? Here. Thank you. <laughs> Elizabeth Paul? Here. Dr. Jamie Horton? Uh, sorry, Jamie. Dr. Jamie, <laughs> <laughs> me? I don't know where that came from. My brain went haywire. Dr. Uh, Jamie. Here. <laughs> John Lemelin? Here. Sandra Griffin? Your mic is not on, Sandra. And I don't have a visual. Okay. Uh, Kataki Badhankar? Here. Here. Okay, Sandra just raised her hand. Thank you, Sandra. Um, at this time, I'm going to move for the approval of the February 10th, 2021 meeting minutes. Uh, any objections? Nope, I second it. Thank you. And all in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Thank you all. And I see that Sandra has raised her hand. So we have a consensus and the minutes have been approved. Um, I thank you all. And we will move to the third item on our agenda at this time. I would like to turn the table over to uh, Dr. Puccioni and um, Ms. Abad to discuss the intern procedure update. Um. <laughs> so Jamie and I, we have worked on the uh, on pay student um, intern program. And we have actually mailed the whole task force the documents, uh, which are the outline of the program, and the announcement of the um, in student internship, as well as the application. Um, basically, right now, we are ready to move forward. Um, and get uh, some feedback if, if you guys didn't have any chance to reply to the email or any other suggestions and uh, if so um, we would like to bring it to uh, Paul Bridge for his, revi his revision and uh, so we can bring in some interns because we need them <laughs> so does anyone had the chance to read through it or have any questions yes Elise. Uh, good work both of you but is the intern is paid position or uh on is it a paid position i'm paid i'm paid it's I'm a paid. that's correct because oh, okay. i was nervous about the payment program so <laughs> nice. no. and uh, also you mentioned they will get a college credit towards the how is that works? Okay, so with the college credit, we are in the process of reaching out the college counselors as well as the high school here in Iskayuna. And so that is pending. But we will add that into the uh, um, we will add that into the outline of the program. And I think it also depends on the college or university itself. Oh. But uh, the, Niskia has a college program, you know, credits, uh, accredited programs at the school, but uh, so I still not, you know, get it. But um, maybe eventually I'll get the full knowledge. Uh, but well, how, as a family, high school, how are you going to give them the college credit? Yeah. And then Niskayuna High School, 
they will probably receive if there is anything uh, we're in the process of making communication with them um like a credit for any community program or so forth within that town of niska you know so we had to get the approval from the town no no, no because it's an unpaid it's an unpaid um internship again and that follows some criteria that we have researched um and it's included in the outline um of the um and uh, of the outline of the program I know, but see, the school has a program with the SUNY Albany or any other Syracuse University if the children take the for public health class, social studies and public health, they will get college credits. So how is going to happen with our task force? Okay, yeah. That now is I not going to happen. Yeah, that that, that's not going to, to happen with, with our task force at this point. Yeah. yeah. That That's a very lengthy process for a school to even get, um, you know, permission to offer college credit and to offer that with Schenectady Community College or Syracuse University. So that is not what we are doing. With regard to the college credits, that would be specifically if the corresponding college that the student is attending is offering college credit through their institution. Right. So that has that is not within our purview, nor will it be in the future. Right. So uh, there's two different, two separate situations. Like uh, when the high school student applies for the program, he will, he or she will be receiving a certificate of completion plus a letter of recommendation, and that's all. Uh, yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, just a uh, question: How many interns are you thinking of? Five. We're thinking of five. There's going to be um, two from um, high school in the senior year, one from junior, and then two from college. Mm -hmm. I think why the we last. Need, why we need five? I think actually we're really open to. It's flexible at this point. Our target that we were under that we first considered was five. But last time we spoke, Dave had mentioned that that might be too many to begin with. Um, I think what we're going to do is take a look at how many applicants we have, use our criteria to select, um, and then determine at that point. Do you have some thoughts on that, Priti? Yeah, no, I was just worried there wouldn't be enough work. Very often with interns, you know, you want to use them well. You don't want them to get bored and frustrated. So maybe in addition to that, you could ask the work groups and the task force what kind of tasks need to be done and how much approximate time it will take so we are not disappointing anybody who comes in with expectations. I think that's a great point. And one of the reasons I think we initially suggested five is because we sort of have five to six work groups and um, we were thinking one per work group. So um, I think that's a great idea to ask each work group how the intern would potentially be used. And if you notice in the description, we have a very clear outline of the activities that interns would be participating in as well as learning objectives. Any other questions? Um, I, I don't know if I probably missed it in one of the communications. Um, is there a timeline? Like how, when do we expect to send it to Paul? When do we expect to hear it back from him? And how soon do we want to um, post it? And suggestions on where do we want to put it out? Absolutely. Ari, do you want to take that? Um, yes. Um, we're planning on after we approve from our task force today uh send out the documents to paul and in hopes that he reviews it and turns it around by this coming up week or so and so that the process can get to to be started um 
but we're planning to have our our goal is to have some interns started in the summer summer so jamie and Lori, so you have specific job description for these interns yes that's what the documents we sent out outline mm -hmm. if you'll take a look at your march 8th email and also yesterday they resent the three documents which were the task force internship program or overview the internship job notice and the internship application form um liz you will see that they uh they have completed those documents. And I have to say, Jamie and Ari, this is uh, a great job, incredibly well done. I, for one, am greatly impressed and willing to move for further discussion and just a quick quote on moving forward. I think uh, you guys, I can see that you uh, put in a lot of time and energy and it's very thorough. I'm very impressed. Thank you. At this time, I would move to take a vote on um, encouraging moving forward with the internship so that we can send these documents over to Paul's office. Uh, would anyone be willing to second my motion? Thank I second. You. I, thank you, Liz and Kay. Um, all, uh, is there anyone who objects at this point? Seeing no hands raised, um, then we will move forward with uh, these documents being sent over to Paul so that we can move towards obtaining interns through this process starting uh, June or July um, of this year. Um, I just want to say good work, Jamie and, and Ari. Good work. Thank you, thank you. So we will move on to, I thank you all. We will move on to the next item on our agenda. Give me one second. <clears throat> We're going to um, turn the tables over to Jamie for the work group updates. Thank you, Dr. Puccioni. Thank you. Okay, first we're gonna hear from the public safety work group. A brief update, maybe not so brief. I'll try to make it brief. Um, hi, Freudian slip. <laughs> no, I understand. Um, so hi, everyone. Um, so big, big, big news in the public safety group is that the town of Niskiana has now produced the police reform and reinvention uh, report. Um, I did email that out to everybody late last week when it came out. Um, please keep in mind that this report was not created by us, by the task force. Um, it was created by the town. They gathered a group of people, 20 or more, including the police and different administrators of the town to develop this report in, in response to um, the executive order 203, which required a review of all, of all police forces in, in the state of New York. So it's not our report, but we did contribute to it. And uh, I think it came out really good. Um, there was a public meeting last night uh, where the public had a chance to look at the report and send in comments. Um, and I know, um, Jamie, I think you, you had a chance to take a look. Um, it was recorded for those of you that weren't able to attend. And there was about a dozen or so, maybe more uh, people in the public who joined the meeting in addition to the town board members. And I think it was a really good discussion of the report. People asked questions, they offered suggestions. It was a pretty good discussion. So. Yeah, I mean, this, it, the video is available on YouTube if you're interested. Um, one thing I did want to mention is that several people expressed concerns during the board meeting um, that they want to make sure that the plan is actually implemented. 
that it not just be a piece of paper that goes on a shelf, you know, that, is, um, you know, doesn't, doesn't change anything. So um, there's a lot of support for that, um, that the fact that it's not going to be uh, just sitting on a shelf. And in fact, two different board members, both Rosemary Jackwith and Bill McPartland, both talked about how important it is to not just get the report, which is recommendations, but turn it into a plan and have that plan actually make the town better, make the police force better. Um, and Chief Wall, by the way, throughout the entire process and her police group were, um, were very collaborative and cooperative, I thought. so. Um, but those two, two board members specifically talked about how important it was to have this plan become action. And they both mentioned the task force specifically in regards to trying to help continue this important work. So with that, I wanted to read one, uh, one two sentences maybe out of the report that pertain to the task force that I think you all should be aware of. And this is in the approach section. So it's after it described, their after report describes the steps that the group has gone through, the collaborative has gone through. And I quote, in view of the need for a long-term commitment to anti-racism work, and in order to continue this work long after the submission of this report, the town's task force for racial equity and justice should maintain oversight and conduct periodic reviews of the actions recommended in this report over the years. The task force may present its findings to the town board as well as the community in the form of periodic reports. So I thought that was pretty significant. It, it validates um, and confirms our role in helping the police department at Niskia to not just complete the report, but actually turn the report into actionable um, um, work. So that was something I just wanted uh, all of you to hear, just in case you didn't have a chance to actually dig through the report. There are um, 65 different recommendations in the report, and there's overlap because they were done by different groups in different places, but that's basically the, um, the kind of the status. With that, I, and then I'll open it up for conversation or discussion, there were three things that we thought may be areas where the task force can continue its work in support of this uh, important initiative. Number one, based on the statement I just read, clearly there's a there's a charge for the task force to, to perform some ongoing tracking of the work that's promised or, or, or has been approved by the board in the form of recommendations and report and independently report that progress back to the town board so that they have a view and frankly the town has a view, independent view of how the work is going and, and if the if the town or the police department or whomever is is actually progressing the way the plan um, expects. So that's kind of one thing. There's two others that I thought were worth mentioning and then I'll open it up. Um, number two is that in, in, in throughout the report in the 65 recommendations that are made, there are many recommendations that pertain to, to actual police oversight or a civilian review board. It's a group of individuals uh, non-police and non-town employees who have a voice and a say in how the police actually are working. Um, could be involved with hiring, could be involved with promotions, could be involved with citizen complaints, in, in a, in a, a non-sworn officer kind of person to help the town in that, um, have that viewpoint of the community. So that's, that's the second area that I think that there's an opportunity for the task force to collaborate with the town to help develop some of these oversight bodies and their associated processes. So that's kind of idea number two. Idea number three is similar. Um, there, in addition to recommendations regarding police oversight, there's also a fair number of recommendations in the report that pertain to ongoing community outreach and communication um, between the constituency, the, the town community, and the police. It's another area where um, there's a lot of recommendations, and it's another area that I think the task force could could help collaborate with the town to help develop some of the processes and the metrics and the and in the in the methods to to communicate with between the police department and the people that they're serving. So those are the three ideas that I that I had in in kind of um, summarizing the report for you all, and wanted to um, see what you think.
If I may, I, I would just like to state, John, that I absolutely agree with you. After uh, taking a cursory look at the report itself and also the CNA report that was done by our outside consultant, um, in addition to just monitoring the work that's been done, I did uh, review quite a number of the minutes and also have attended a, at least one collaborative meeting. And um, I absolutely agree that this is an opportunity for the task force to now utilize this information as number one, a basis for our data, and number two, to actively um, act as a um, tracking and oversight development tool for the town. Um, and of course, develop uh, processes for, and suggest processes in a collaborative way to the town for community outreach and communication and in going into the future. Um, so I'm sort of excited about this for the public safety group because it gives us a chance to really dig our teeth into working with the town towards a more just community. Um, so we'll just have to, I suggest that we move forward and, you know, take the helm with this. Great. Thank you, John. Any other thoughts or reactions, comments? Yeah, good I, job. Good job, Lon. <laughs> So uh, I did read the report. It's it's a lot of work and uh, a lot of heart, I would say, in the report, the collaborative report. I was I had just two questions. I'm wondering the CNA also the consultant. They also submitted a report. How will the do you know how the town will put both of these together? And the second question I had was, uh, I think it was 16% of the interactions between police and community were with Niskayuna residents. Most of it, more than three fourths, is out of town residents. Was there any discussion? You know, it's outside the Niskayuna police jurisdiction. Any discussion on how this is going to be addressed? It wasn't in the CNA report. I didn't see it in the collaborative report either. Was there any discussion? Uh, so your your first point, pretty, is a good one. It did come up on the in the board meeting last night, and that was how is the town going to deal with these two reports, right? CNA did a report with recommendations and the collaborative report. I think the answer the town said was that they're going to develop a plan that integrates both of those sets of recommendations, or potentially have two plans where the two groups are working together. So it wasn't crystal clear exactly how they would. Um, accomplish that. Um, as far as your second point, it was it was discussed. Um, the, some of the statistics that you mentioned, I would have expected that in the CNA report more than the collaborative report. The collaborative report talked mostly about process and procedures, um, and I have not gone back and reread the CNA report, so I don't know exactly how they would how they um, how they handled that. All right, John, I have a question. I'm, I'm curious, how much did the town have to pay CNA for this report, for their work? I have no idea. That's, that's public information, should it be? It, it was about 30, it was $30,000, I believe, Doc. That, that's the figure I heard. Okay. Just curious, is there, a, where will we go to actually find that figure and associated breakdowns? Does anybody... You know? I got the number 25,000, and I'm not sure. Maybe we could ask a town board member. I, I Someone sure told me 25,000, yeah. Well, again, I, I just think it's important because, again, one of the whole, we start talking about transparency. Uh, the reason that we have this meeting stream is for the transparency of this task force. I like to see about the transparency of the cost associated with the report as well. So, uh, I, I just I think that's should, that's something that should be up front, and something I would I certainly would like to know. Maybe if Paul joins us later, I'm, I'm I 
would guess he should, well, I believe he should know, but uh, certainly all the board members would know how much it cost. Is Lisa still on the uh, call? Doc, an article yeah, on here. Sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Do you know the I'm cost? Here. Do you know the cost of the report? I don't know the cost, but I'm emailing um, Rosemary right now to see if she could give us a figure. And um, I'll include Paul in the email. Um, and if they respond before the meeting, I'll let you know. And otherwise, I'll let you guys know as soon as I'll email all of you as soon as it um, is given to me. But it's definitely everything is available for sure. I'll also ask Ismet, the uh, comptroller. So we'll see. Okay. Someone will have an answer for you. Uh, Doc, the, yes. the, uh, there's, there was an article in the Daily Gazette which reported that it was a $25,000 study. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I would just like, not only, uh, and that's, that's great to know that figure. I, I, I'd also like to see, they would have, probably have to present some type of de itemized, either itemized costs, et cetera. I just like to see exactly what they charge for, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, I think that's important and, and just in the spirit of transparency. I think in terms of getting the actual information, we can certainly make a request and a formal request just so that we have accurate, you know, non secondhand information and get a breakdown. And um, our town finance committee can certainly follow up on that. Um, and we can send that out so that we have it at the next meeting. Thank you. Appreciate that. Any other questions, uh, discussion about uh, the public safety group and where we go from here? I just wanted to say that I have seen all the work that the group has done and uh, you are all truly dedicated um, to accomplishing the goal and you put the time in and it was appreciate it and um truly um i won't say acceptable it was more than that it was it was outstanding work that you guys did i totally agree kudos to uh, you got all of you on the public safety committee and to john and larry as co-chairs all the credit goes to John. Yeah, let, let, they like, let me be clear. This report was developed by a whole bunch of people. I, I helped. I wrote like a very small section um, with some other people on the task force in the working group. It, it was a very much a town effort um, led by the supervisors, um, um, confidential secretary Brian Backus and, and the chief of police and others. So, um, but I'm, but I'm, I'm glad you're all impressed with the report I, I think it I also think it, it looks really good and it, you know it's, but it's it's the first step it, there's a lot more work to be done so stay tuned I also want to point out that Jillian helped participate in that in the writing of that report and she's not present tonight but she also participated okay moving on we um, should hear from the community service work group. Oh, Jamie, Jamie's yes. not here. I don't know why we don't Sorry, have. Sorry, I, I wanted to say something. Uh, okay, never mind. No. I wanted to to answer mm -hmm. Dr. Howard Horton. Um, that I just researched uh, about the uh, payment. Oh, and it uh, was that's, that's reported in a Times Union article. <laughs> Twenty-five thousand dollars was paid uh, CNA for that report. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. Sorry about that, Jamie. That's okay. Uh, Liz, would you like to go ahead and um, make a report on the community service work group? Yes, but I, I don't know. Um, as you said, Jillian also helped John with our program. She, uh, I think, tremendous days of non sleeping to finish the work. But I don't know what happened to her today, but um, uh, the last meeting uh, we divided the group into so many parts. So I, my uh, main uh, issue is the seniors 
sender so i reach out to my people and they will get back to me uh soon and uh, they didn't have a mission statement and lori is working on it and uh, lisa i will talk to her tomorrow about the pro but um, you know that place is running pretty good but uh, hopefully with my gray hair i can get some more information what we are looking for and um, yeah, i didn't hear anything from alan from his uh, youth programs He's supposed to contact us. I don't know what is happening, but um, uh, as far as now, my well, you know, part is pretty clear and moving forward. And also with the educational program, we are a tremendous conversation between David and Gillian and myself. And uh, we are not going anywhere, but we have so many ideas in our head. We don't know how to put it in paper. So David is going to work on our mission statements to one of these days. But you know, I have so many books to read, and we've been going to group out to you know give the books names so we can read and discuss, and we can come up with a nice uh, end process. That's about it. And one more thing, Jill, uh, Jamie. I just saw your article in the paper running for a office and congratulations and I didn't know you're a politician. Dave, I think uh, you had your hand raised and so did Dale. Thank you, Jamie. I just wanted to add a little bit to what um, Liz already offered. So um, as, as she said, um, in our last meeting, we kind of broke down some of the uh, responsibilities of the working group and uh, like Alan and I are, are going to handle um, parks and uh, youth employment, for example. Um, I did report to the task force leadership about my meeting with um, with Letitia Bennett. Um, it goes by Tish. And uh, basically it was uh, an introductory meeting where uh, I spoke about uh, my experience and and my goals and she talked about her experience and her goals um, at, in her position with the district as chief equity officer and uh, made it clear that uh, in our capacity as a task force we really have no oversight over the school district um, they are a separate public entity um, and we have nothing to do with policy or anything like that but and she had fully understood all of that and that we would be working hopefully collaboratively um, perhaps consulting with one another on initiatives moving forwards between the town and the school district and she would be um, her, her next step is to bring our discussion um, her and my discussion to the superintendent and deputy superintendent to let them know about our willingness and interest in working with them moving forward hopefully um, being able to support one another in this work. Dale? Okay, David, I did see, thank you so much for meeting with uh, the school equity officer. My um, pleasure. And I just, I did look at your email and coming out of it, did you have any concerns or um, conclusions that uh, you think may apply to the task force work? Um, not really concerns, Dale, more um, kind of brainstorming about how we might work together moving forward. Um, I, I had spoken about how uh, exposure is, is really a, a huge goal in this work and that um, a lot of us don't know what we don't know about racism and racial justice and racial racial inequality and inequities and that um we, we need to make that one of our goals or, or focus foci um within the district um to perhaps offer co co-sponsor perhaps training speakers um that will introduce not just the school district but open it up to the general public about about racism and what it really means and how uh generation generationalized it's it is how uh, deeply rooted it is and how to um how to address it but the first step being to expose people to it because again we don't know what we don't know a lot of us and um so that that was one thing we spoke about but i i think um you know she's new to this position she's been in it just about a year she said i believe and uh i think she's very want very much wanting to work closely with the superintendent and the deputy superintendent as she should 
and that their um, their goals and our goals should be pretty uniform before you know taking any steps forward. So I'm not really concerned. I'm just cautiously optimistic about what we can do together, and just through some ideas around that, we hope we'll gain some traction moving forward. Uh, I'd like to respond to that if I may. Uh, I don't know who's who's on the working group there, but. Uh, I would argue that uh, there are a number of members of this task force who are, are very knowledgeable of, about, about racism, not only uh, by way of research and study, but also by painful experience. Oh, well, we spoke about that as well, Doc, that, that there's expertise within the group itself that can offer a lot of that support. Okay, because I mean, <laughs> I was a little, so you say you don't, uh, in a way, uh, it sounds it sounds almost as if well first we have to figure out what is what racism is. Well, I, okay, uh, wait a minute. <laughs> no, you're being very fair. I just no we, we that we definitely spoke about that. Okay, I just wanted to make sure now because uh, hell, I can just give you a Zoom link to uh, one of my classes and uh, I'll, I'll 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 tighten y'all up uh, in one session. <laughs> right. <laughs> of course. Okay. Uh, also, she doesn't. Uh, there's a shen equity going on, and uh, Professor Horton knows about that too. And uh, I can also bring a speaker to talk about the racism and inclusion, equity and inclusion. A speaker, maybe that that will help us. That will, you know give us a way to open our community discussions. If you are, give me a permission to reach out to the speaker, I can get him. I, I mean, I, I, I guess I'm trying to understand, given the expertise you have on the, on the uh, task force, why is that necessary? I mean, if you want, to, if you want somebody, like, hell, ask me, I'll do it for you. Uh, listen, I mean, you go going through. Why do you got? You don't have to reach out. I think that's the whole purpose. Please put me in check if I'm wrong. That's the whole purpose of having a task force like this, so we can have the already have the uh, assembled expertise, uh, so that we can, uh, so that if if you want to do something like that, we can do it, do it ourselves. I mean, we don't need to be. No, of course. Yeah, you're so, absolutely right. Yeah, when I said guest speaker, it it, it wasn't exclusive to outside the, the task force by any means. Oh, okay. uh, Professor Horton, you can do a talk, you know, inviting the community. I know you are doing a good job with the with practice. I listen every night. But, uh, so you can do a, you know, forum. That way we can teach our community what is this racism all about. Oh, sure. You know, that they can so open cool. their eyes and heart how to treat other people with the respect. If we can do that, we can come up with some conclusion with our task force. And you can include all the other people who is not coming to this meeting. We have 15 people in this committee. Do you know that? There is the other people. So if we can invite all those people and you can engage them in a proper way, so this task force will bring good results for our community. Thank well, you. Okay, yeah, because I was, so I, and I wasn't making up, just trying to make a, a bid for myself. I can, there, there are a number of people on this on this task force who, who uh, could be excellent speakers. I know this for a fact, and so I guess I and I and I, I guess I'm just I, I guess I was just a little bit confused by what I was hearing, uh, because I thought that was like a, a necessary step when you have a when you have a task force with people who are well qualified to just do this uh, and so but nevertheless uh, that, that's all I that's that's all I would just wanted to say is that <clears throat> that we want to the, the point and purpose of this is to assemble uh, a group of talented people who have the expertise and 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 experience in various areas so that we can move the town forward so if you're talking about doing something uh, even though again, and I, I'll speak for myself, even though I'm not on that specific working group. Uh, if 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 you want if you want a either a workshop or a talk uh, done, uh, uh, talk to me, 
and I'd be willing, we, we can schedule something. I'd be, I'd be very much willing to work something out. I do trainings um, uh, now with Zoom. I do trainings for folks from all around the country all the time. Okay, I even have my own consulting practice. So it's, and I wouldn't even charge you guys. So, and so I guess the point is, is that uh, let's, let's, let's stay focused on and, and under, understand what we have in our hands. Okay. So anyway, enough, uh, enough preaching to the choir. I just, I think you get my idea. Thank you. So you can, and uh, David, maybe David, you can reach out to Dr. Horton and we can work on it. We too will jo reach out to you, so then we can come up with some ideas. Thank you. Okay, moving on. Public services, Kay. So um, I do not have an update. I have started working on the roadmap document. That's This is really a new group, so I'm um, starting from scratch, taking all the good parts from everybody else's roadmap. Um, and I'm still a group of one, so not a group yet. Um, inviting others to join. I'll send out an email after after this meeting if anybody would like to join the public services group. So that's all as the update. Thank you, Kay. The town finance and town admin work groups have created the roadmaps and we have also started to create a framework for collecting relevant documents and asking research questions, which will then drive the data that we'll be collecting. So we have already started to collect documents and conduct a document analysis and develop relevant related questions to collect additional data that will be analyzed. Thank you, Jamie. Any questions about that? Um, I think we have one more work group, data and best practices. Okay, yeah, I um, thank you. This is Preeti and Ari is the co-chair. I noticed David was listed on the work group. David actually is not on the work group yet, <laughs> but uh, he's, so I just wanted to kind of uh, update that. Uh, we have the rest are on the work group. We had trouble identifying a meeting time, but we did set a meeting for next Friday, um, which is March 19th. As you know, we uh, the work group we very much wanted to invite community outside the task force to participate. Um, but members, the work group members wanted to really go through the process themselves before they invited outside members. So that's what's happening on the 19th. Uh, the reason I'm kind of in, wanted to invite us, uh, other members is because when you invite members from the start, you get buy-in. It becomes, you're asking all the easy questions in the beginning. And when you get buy-in, then it becomes our plan and our best practices and our data rather than the task force or the town. So that's why I'm kind of been pushing that let's call the task force members. So hopefully after the 19th, everybody will be a little less nervous about inviting community. I'm not expecting a mob when we open it up to community. It's a work group. So it's not like we're going to listen to your needs. We are going to build a shared understanding. And though we think we all have a shared understanding, it's implicit. We are going to map it out and make it more explicit. And uh, it, like I said, it'll take approximately six months uh, once we start the process. But like, so we're meeting to start it. We're meeting next Friday, and we have uh, two. We have six members on the task force, so we have place for one more person. And one of our task force members cannot make the meeting next Friday. So we have space for two people from the task force. So I'll send out a meeting notice by tomorrow. Uh, so if you're interested in participating, just let me know and I'll get you the meeting logistics information. That's all, thanks. Okay. 
at this time then, thank you very much, Janie, and thank you, Priti, for your update. Um, at this time, we'll move towards additional topics. We have no formal additional topics slated to be heard. So I'll leave the floor, I'll open the floor to anyone who wishes to introduce any additional topics for today's meeting. And I see no hands raised. Yes, Liz. Oh, I'm sorry. I have always questions. Oh, one question. Don't take it personally. Because uh, I saw Jamie is running for position. So what is what will happen? She's in the task force. Um, well, Liz, that, that we can discuss outside of this public forum. Oh. But you're more than welcome to email me or call me. You have my contact information, and I invite you to do so. Also, the bylaws are very specific as to um, when and if we lose a member. So if Jamie were to become supervisor, or if for any reason someone were to leave the task force, we would immediately notify the town through the leadership committee and ask the town to appoint a new member to the task force and go through whatever their appointment process is. So they would at that time, I believe, advise the town and encourage individuals to submit an interest letter and then thereafter appoint a new member to the task force. So um, at least, I mean, there is a process through which we can go if we lose members for whatever reason. Yes, Kay. I'm sorry, this question is related to the intern program. Sorry, my mic was not working at that time. Um, do we foresee um, like a selection committee or a smaller work group that will review applications? Um, or this is forthcoming once we get through the, the application posting portion? That's a great question, Kay. I think Ari and I um, will be the initial contact people for the application process. And um, we, we think that the leadership committee could be a part of the decision-making process. So it could be the case that Ari and I review the applications and then make recommendations to the leadership committee to have other people participating in the process and then make final selections after that meeting. That's a good idea. Okay. Um, I will note that the leadership committee, uh, just by way of a quick update before I uh, entertain a motion to adjourn, I um, will note that the leadership committee did meet with all the chairs um, and co-chairs of the various work groups. And we will continue to do so on a monthly basis uh, basis at our leadership meetings, which are usually on the following the Wednesday following our monthly uh, task force meeting. So I will we will be sending out notice of the next leadership meeting, but I would just ask the chairs to pencil in a monthly meeting um, so that they can meet with the work groups as we did this past month. Um, do I have a motion to adjourn the meeting? So thank moved. You. Thank you, Liz and Doc Horton. And anyone second that motion? I second. second it. Thank you, Arinka and David. And the meeting is now adjourned. I thank you all and look forward to seeing you guys next month. We might be meeting soon in person. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so exciting. Take care. Thank you. Good night, everyone. Good night, everyone. Good night, everybody. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Good night, guys. Good night.